Ready? Call mm -hmm. to order the, the uh, regular meeting of the Wellington Board of Selectmen for March 4th, 2024. If you'd uh, join me in the. Mm -hmm. the to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have the minutes here. Do I hear a motion to accept? I have the motion to accept the minutes. Please. Second. Discussion? I read this before our meeting. Um, I don't have any comments on it. Um, is it normal practice for us to list every single person who attends in the audience in the, in the attendance of these meetings? Uh, it was requested by a town's person, so that's why we did that. Was a, we, we can revisit that as a uh, standard at some point. Anything else? No, nothing else. All in favor? I present to speak. Is anybody here present to speak? You're gonna read the rules about that. I don't have my rules here because I didn't write them down. I have it. All right. Wait one second. I think I have it here. I got it. Okay. Public participation is encouraged. Speakers are limited by appropriateness, staying on topic, and maintaining decorum. Time may be limited to maintain progress. Please request to reserve time during the meeting if you wish to speak to a specific agenda item. Anybody present to speak? Mr. Latinchus? Peter Latinchus, 97 Trask Road. I want to address two, two topics tonight to your board. Um, one regarding the fire building committee and then the second being the budget process that's currently underway. With respect to the fire building committee that we have for discussion of now at your meetings, CIP meetings and board finance meetings, I would encourage your board to have, compose a committee that represents our community. And I, I just can't stress this enough. Uh, it cannot be a committee of firefighters. We love our firefighters, they're wonderful people, but there is a distinction between a town building committee and the members of that committee and the functions of our fire departments. Building committees have their task, the fire companies have their task. So it's important that the majority of this committee be made up of townspeople. Certainly, we expect the firefighters to be a resource. Um, but like all our past successful building committees in this town, and I witnessed a, a couple of them in my 35 plus years here, when we built the town garage, Certainly, when we built the library, when we had the ADA committee for the schools that made those modifications, these were all highly successful committees that completed their charge, and, and they were successful projects because they were composed of townspeople um, that worked, volunteers who worked diligently together for a common purpose. What's instructive to us is what happened with the school building committee that I was part of. Um, I think one of the things that was not successful with that committee was that it was perceived by the town as a committee of edu educators and the educational group, uh, for lack of a better word. It, it didn't reflect the community. They, they had a vision of what they wanted and, and it never connected with the townspeople, um, for better or worse. Um, so I, I strongly urge you not to do that this time. And, and what's important in the process, again, which didn't work well with the school building committee, was it's important that there be an open and transparent process in selecting candidates for this committee and then creating the committee. That 
happen finally in the second go around the school building committee, but there's also a difference between the outcome uh, and, and, and intent. Um, because we didn't get a committee or the school building committee that reflected the community. Um, and that could happen again here, and I urge you not to do that. So thank you, um, this is gonna be a, with respect to the fire, fire building committee. Um, as far as the budget process, I'm encouraged by what I see so far. I think it's important for the board of selectmen to work directly with Christina and CIP um, and the board of finance on vetting out what CIP projects need to go forward, particularly in year one, and then what the schedule will be looking out and how that ultimately impacts the budget. And I, I look forward to your progress in that area. Thanks so much for everything you do. I do am hoping for progress. <laughs> Anyone else? Online? Seeing no one online, raising their hand. Uh, thank you for that, Pete. Correspondence, I don't have any uh, correspondence that doesn't go with something else right now. First selectman status report, Willington Day. The committee has begun to form. Uh, Melissa McKinnon has uh, stepped up once again as a former member of that committee. It was a committee of one, so I have asked her to get in touch with uh, uh, the Parks and Recreation Department and she will be working with them but we will also be looking for other people in the community to uh, step up and, and assist them with that. I believe the fire departments have already been contacted to run the uh, concessions and have agreed to do so. So the fire departments are stepping up and, and we will be advertising for more positions. So if people are interested in that, uh, please. Uh, cybersecurity. Cybersecurity has become a bigger and bigger issue. Uh, the town uh, side as well, working in conjunction with the education side of the building, have chosen a vendor as a cybersecurity insurance agent. It, it allows us to recover should uh, we have a cyber attack. Our uh, people uh, at Novus are hardening the system and we are working with cloud-based products to further make sure that we are disabled completely. But that's what we're doing with cybersecurity. Uh, the town's memorandum of understanding uh, with the union for a four day work week expires uh, two weeks from today. Uh, we've been working with the union with are doing is instead of making a decision to go completely permanent with that, we're disbanding it at this time. We're extending it until July 1st, which is when the new contract takes place so that we can uh, negotiate it instead of just either granting it or denying it. I'm interested, by the way, on that from what the public thinks of a four day work week for, for town employees, service to the town hall, contact me, contact me, contact Andy, let us know what you think. Um, it's hard to make these kinds of decisions uh, without input and how this affects people. So I encourage you to do that. Um, the Kerma, our town insurance company, has, is coming next week. Next week, this week, this Thursday week. this week, I believe, to Wednesday, Wednesday this Wednesday. week to inspect all the town buildings, including the schools, for insurance purposes. So we will be uh, dealing with that on Wednesday. And uh, the last was it last Monday, a week ago today, we had a fire at the High Chase Assisted Living Facility. It was a small fire. The fire did no damage to the building, but the suppression system did. So it essentially wiped out half the building. We worked, uh, Chief Moore, Chief Snyder, and a number of people, including the building officials from here, the state, Stafford, 
uh, human services from the state. The fire marshals, both for the town and the state, came in. It was decided that 32 people, 32 or 33, technically. 43? 33. 33 people were displaced. Uh, they had to be moved out of the building. We couldn't shelter them in place. So uh, the town public works and senior center used their vehicle to move these people down to the roadway in where the town put them up for 24 hours. We will be recovering that money from the high chase and, and state people. It was the state ombudsman for human services. Yeah. So it, it, they take care of the residents. Um, what it was decided the building was unsafe for the residents to be in. Um, the state essentially takes over, but the town is on the hook because we're the ones technically closing the building. Um, it wasn't safe for them to be there. They lost the kitchen. They lost half their heating out system. Um, but we did make the agreement with them that we will get everything set up, running, do the first day, and then they they would reimburse they would reimburse us. And as soon as we figure out the billing for that, we should we're expecting yeah, reimbursement. It, it, should, it hasn't occurred yet, but it should yes soon. Um, if I could just add, thank you to all the town staff that helped that day. It was a very hectic morning. Um, yes, Pete was there at two thirty in the morning with us, and then. I woke everybody else up in town by seven. So we had a good turnout by both departments. It was a great collaborative effort between the entire town. So if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, statutorily, that's our responsibility to do that kind of thing, right? Yes, sir. Um, and find places for the Correct. Right. So we had the emergency management director to find the housing. Um, Roadway Inn was capable of handling everybody from that facility. Yeah. Um, and then the state worked very quickly and very well um, to get everybody replaced in the different uh, homes. 26 were moved by that night, and the rest were moved by noon the next day. Okay. okay. I think that covers the status report on that for right now. Uh, did you print the public works letter? The letter? I have it in the email. Let me see if I can find it in my email. I have it right here. All right. Shannon, you one more. You one more. Thank you. Wait, sixty-two eyes and fifty-two arms are not working together today. Focus. How did I get fifteen emails in the last ten? You were minutes? a very popular. Here it is, right here. All right, you want to read it? I sure will. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so Troy sent over his report this morning. Public Works has been patching potholes, cleaning catch basins, maintain maintenance of mower and prep for spring, maintenance and washing of trucks, painting and maintenance of plows, roadside mowing, chipping brush, they finished the roof and siding, siding of DPW carport. It is complete. They installed the bulletin board at the town office building for human services and parks and rec. They installed a new cross culvert on Daleville Road to fix the drainage issues. And they fixed a sinkhole on the gravel portion of Mason Road. Yes, they did. It's my truck on the second pass <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. Now we get to new business. The state siting council, for which the town has no say, uh, has cited a new five megawatt battery storage facility on Blair Road between Blair and Village Hill. Uh, the property extends up into Stafford. The the access road to uh, get to this facility will actually be on the Stafford side of the line. The facility itself will be on the Willington side of the line. Uh, the reason they're building this is to uh, take the uh, peaks and valleys out of the power supply. So at peak uh, power usage, they can 
add power to the system and at low periods they can pull power from the system so that we don't have to build more uh, power generation facilities. And uh, during the presentation we got, it was also pointed out that many green uh, generation facilities aren't stable. So that the wind power doesn't generate when there's no wind and the solar generates very little when there's no sun. So you want to store that power and use it later. That's what this facility is for. They've done a sound study on where the sound will be for. It'll be a hum from a uh, transformer. I believe when they're pumping power out, but I'm not sure about that it's one way or the other. Uh, and the reason I'm bringing this up because the town has no say over it is that the company that's building it is willing to put on a public talk on their sound and uh, environmental uh, impact if the town is interested. So if the town is interested, please let me know and I will contact the company for a presentation. How much sound, how much sound are we talking about here? It's a, it's a, it's like a, a the uh, transformers on the poles. It was Except it's, it's, it's low. It, yeah, it's not gonna as be. a matter of fact, I think that the line where you can hear human hearing effects doesn't reach any of the residential properties. We any, so, have we had any input from the, from the residents in that area? Or? We have not. Uh, we don't. It, the I know, we have the nothing. state doesn't take input. The, the right. siting council decides where it's going. Any pilot funds for this? Pardon me? Any pilot funds? In, you know? uh, so there is tax funds for this. It's a private concern. Uh, so it's the pilot is for state concerns. This is a private concern, which is another thing I need to talk about. Did you have something to put in my I have a couple comments on this. Okay. One of the things is that uh, we may need a new ordinance on taxation to level the taxation on this project and other major projects that may come to town. These high end, uh, um, these these capital intense projects also have the taxes front loaded. So what they they've been doing in other towns is they've been tax loading so that you pay fewer taxes at the beginning and more taxes at the end so that the tax load evens out over time, much like this battery is doing for the power system, so that the town would collect as many taxes, but they'd be able to, to capitalize. Yeah, that presupposes that it's going to be in existence for the exit for the entire lifespan. And right. And may or may not. Uh the way they're building this, I'm the lifespan is not excessive. So I get it. if they can't make it last for the lifespan, they're not making any money. It's sort of look like to me but now, that's a question that yeah, yeah i'm interested i know mike wants to talk i'm interested in in having a presentation, presentation for sure i mean we'll, we'll after, work after, on that after our board selection meeting mm -hmm. um, maybe the conservation commission is interested in understanding um any environmental impacts of this or expected right impacts. uh I have something to say about oh the one thing i want to tell you is that i did question him all the access roads are our fire truck accessible? They do have pull offs so that you can pass each other going in and out. And there's a turnaround at the end so you don't have to back out. They will provide training for the fire departments, both initially and annually after this to make sure that it goes. Uh, they Part of it was you said you don't want to pour too much water into the one that's burning because what it does is it picks up all the, the uh, the waste yeah. product and chemicals and floods them out into into your environment. But if you let them burn, the, the the containers will hold it all. You just want to keep the ones next to it from catching fire. Hey, cool. I don't, before you, I just have one question. Can we find out what the address is going to be? Because the address is going to determine whether That's we a good need question. To, we need <laughs> to have a um, agreement with Stafford if we're going to be the ones responding. Um, okay. Yes, there was an address, Is it but I didn't think of that, and I think it's Stafford. 
So we need to figure that out. What we need to figure that out. Because if it's a Stafford address, yeah. Stafford. Mike? So, uh, yeah, co confirming a couple of different things. I had a couple of conversations with the chief and with our fire marshal because I was in training last week for these facilities um, and uh, with an engineer from Tesla, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of detail we don't need to go into tonight about how it works, how the firefighting works and all that. We'll be sharing that information here. They have offered us training. There is a little bit of room for public input to the siting council decisions. The thing is you have to be watching for it to get your input. That's past, we're yeah. past that point. Um, however, it does seem that the designs these days, they've gotten very conscious of the public outreach and concern about fires. Yep. And the designs have, from an engineering viewpoint, have, have progressed a lot. Um, so I'm feeling encouraged about where this is going. Um, and it is right, the driveways in Stafford, the site is in Wellington, so we'll have to work that out. And it has overhead power lines going down to Blair. Blair Road yeah. to tie in to the power lines over there. And there are multiple locations this is going around the state. So there will be offer there'll be right. opportunities for us to share information from other communities. I, I believe we're one of the they're building three initial ones and we are from one this of company and yeah. there are others that are happening around the state um, from other companies. And other locations. Um, and yes, the uh, the key is to not wash all the chemicals out of it and down the road. And actually, water degrades and causes short circuits and actually can make the fires worse in them. So, <laughs> important training for the fire department will be coming. I'm sorry. I am hoping we're going to avoid that. I is, keep hearing voices in my head. No, no, not there. no it's on there someplace, oh. I think. Is there tree removal and and is it and the, you know because Blair Road's got all those residencies. I, I believe so, but the way the land is owned and being <laughs> leased, I don't think it'll affect any of those residences. Okay, but there will be more wires like, like heavy fires right. around yeah. those homes or near those. No, homes. no, it, it goes directly from Blair Road along, so the piece is the whole piece goes from one road to the other, right from Blair all the way over to Village Hill. And the the, the uh, road will be on the property coming in this way, and the lines will be on the property coming this way, the leased property. So it won't affect any It'll of the It'll be almost stuff. invisible. If you look at the siting council information, it looks like it's almost invisible. Yeah, it looks like a big driveway, and then nobody will see anything else. Why did we miss the vote on public input? I don't know. This started long before me. I, I got a notice that with the PNZ at least four or five months ago. I was saying and I think we had discussions about it about a year ago. Yeah. <clears throat> so I know there's been discussion. This isn't a new topic, but they, they came to the PNC. It's, it's it's new to me. Yeah. Might be the well, yeah. Yeah. I, I missed it prior to them sending me a letter seven saying that's so, yeah. kind of important. Okay. So that's power storage. Moving on to B. Assessment time waiver. We have received a letter from Cable Technology uh, requesting an exemption to the time, file time for their property. Uh, they missed, they did not file in time. They did not um, <clears throat> file for, for an extension in time. And they did not file for a review in time. Right. And so they went to our assessor um, and the town assessor had told them that their option, their last option right now was under Connecticut General Statute Section 12-94E which I have here if you want to read it. No, it's okay. I, I trust that you've read it. Before. I have read it. And and it's not... I read it several times because it's not as clear as I would like, but um, essentially what happens is that if you don't do that, there's a 25% penalty. Penalty charge, yeah. Penalty charge. So all we would exempt them from is the penalty. They can call for an exemption if they have experienced a hardship right. 
and it would do the town good to keep them in town. And so seeing as how they're going concern, I think keeping them in town would be a good thing. I'm not mistaken, they had a uh, health problem with the owner. And right, the health problem, there was long-term health problems with the owner who I believe passed away. Yes, he did. Which is how our assessor found out that they had a hardship. Yeah. And with the new owner, and then they've got a new um, bookkeeper, let's see. A new accounting manager. Uh, they missed the the time frame, so the total penalty. We don't have an exact number on that because it will be uh, calculated with the new yes uh, mill rate, which has not been set yet, but it will be in the vicinity of six thousand four hundred and seventy seven dollars. <throat> And do I, yeah, I, I'll make a motion to to uh, uh, waive the penalty fee associated with uh, not filing and not filing for review on time. Um, we're estimating that to be six thousand three hundred and four hundred and seven or that's six dollars. If it doesn't be adjusted later on, we can adjust it later on. Okay, I will second that motion. Any discussion? Discussion sounds like a good plan to me. I, you know, they have our if the law says we can do it. The law says we can do it. I don't have any discussion either. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Desk. Tax refunds from the assessors, uh, from the uh, collectors, tax collectors office. Ooh, we have a pile. So, I move that we uh, refund property taxes in the amount of $158. Yeah. Uh, Janet said that's not the interest, right? Correct. I believe the we interest had, is not included. It's, it's just the. Right. So the motion does not include interest. Correct. We will uh, refund the property taxes in the amount of $158.87. Uh, to Sean Farrington adjusted refund at the recommendation of at the recommendation of uh of the uh, revenue collector. I'll second. Any discussion? No. Oh, this is in for excessive uh, payment. Okay. Paid too much. Uh, I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um. I move that we refund property taxes in the amount of $3,350.08 be made to Danny Pansiera for a refund of excessive payment. I'll second. You can move. Uh, all right. Uh, any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move that we refund property taxes in the amount of $120.02 be made to Tara LeBond for refund of excessive payments. I'll second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um. I move that we refund property taxes in the amount of $280.98 be made to Justin Atkins for a refund of excessive payment. Uh, second. Discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move that we refund property taxes in the amount of $417.51 be made to Vault Trust for excessive payment. Uh, second. Discussion? We'll discuss. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I move that we refund property taxes in the amount of $70.88 be made to Kelly Wilson for a refund of excessive payment. Uh, second. Discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that concludes that portion of tonight's activities. I need to sign those. I will do that following the meeting. 
Um, the next topic I want to bring up is the stage upstairs in the common room. Uh, I'd like to remove it, but I want permission from the full board to do so. The reason I'd like to remove it is number one, it's a tripping hazard. Number two, it reduces the uh, occupancy, maximum occupancy level of the room. And third, I want about two feet of the right hand side for storage space for the registrars and it would make uh, the construction of that space considerably easier. Uh, I believe the cost to the town would be negligible. The uh, public work said they could do it in about two hours. The drawback is that the floor will look ugly until we get the floor done, which isn't in CIP until year two. The stage was originally uh, constructed when the room was used for the senior center mm -hmm. to put on their whatever their presentations. Mm -hmm. it's, a, there's, it's, a, it's also limited headroom when you're standing on the stage because I believe when it was built, the drop ceiling wasn't there. But, so I would like to remove that. Good with me. I'm open to public comment and then we have an opinion on it. But you know, go ahead. Have you made an assessment for how fast this yet? Because that'll blow your project budget through the roof. Uh, I don't believe the tiles up there are asbestos, but I will. I will. It's all that. It's all that. Yeah. All right. We will. We will check for asbestos before we blow it up. Good point. Point well taken. Same dollars. I thank you for that. Make a note, please. Especially because that's the site of early voting. You know. Oh, it's yes. Okay. Yeah, and that that's another reason I want to move it is because it will allow the more, more space make more space for for voting, and we've got a lot of voting coming up. But Pete, I'm the sorry. question I would have is how. Yeah, the question I would have is how uh, how unusable will the flooring under that be? I think it will be usable. It so just people won't will be nice. tripping up and down. No, there. I don't believe so. We and we, we're, we're not practice tap dancing now. Yeah, <laughs> we you know we'll figure out something so that that space will still will be more usable than it currently is. I'm hoping. Interesting to see what surprises under that platform. Yeah. <laughs> Problems with the height. It, it may be a uh, it may be good for rats nerds. Yeah. Hygiene too to get rid of it for all I know. But we will check that. And there'll be a time capsule on there. Yeah. <laughs> which brings us to the fire building committee, which Pete spoke to at the beginning here. I have a draft document for a charge on this committee. It, I've been tweaking it almost daily to take into account the uh, wants and desires of those who will be affected by it and including the town and Pete. So uh, I have increased the number of townspeople on the board to at least match the number of fire department people on the board. I, I, I hesitate to go too much beyond that because once the committee gets beyond a certain size, it, it, it doesn't, it's not showing the speed. I also took into account Chief Moore's issue. And uh, so I would like to, I will read this first. This is, I, I'm reading it as a motion, but I, I am not making it as a motion. Right. All right. I move to create. So we'll, we'll, we'll just talk about this again. When you yes, know. yes, yes. That, so as soon as I read it, then I'll go into my, what I want to do for next steps. And We'll see if we agree. Okay. Uh, the motion is to create an emergency services building committee, which will consist of 10 members made up of three, two voting and one alternate members representing the Willington Hill Fire Department, three, two voting and one alternate member representing the Willington Hill Fire Department, uh, the Willington Fire Department number one, one member from the Board of Selectmen, one member from the Board of Finance, and two members from the community with minimal or no ties to either fire department and preferably with some capital planning and or construction experience. One non-voting non-committee member will be a recording secretary. The charge of this committee is as follows. 
One, identify emergent fire department facility issues, develop and initiate a plan with consideration for immediate and long-term needs and financial responsibility. That would be covering your issues. Engage both fire departments, fire marshals, selectmen, emergency management, police, and any, and any similar agencies to understand current and future programmatic needs that might drive facility needs. Three, review previous studies for information related to service needs that affect facility needs. Four, re review previous studies for information related to condition and effectiveness of current facilities. Five, determine and recommend engagement of consultants or similar professionals to assist in the following. A, collect and evaluate data on historical emergency services slash public safety needs based on type, severity, and location. B, pursue any available forecasts for future emergency services, public safety trends or demands based on type, severity, and location. C, discern any opportunities to meet programmatic needs of the town without unneeded duplication of resources, programs, et cetera. D, determine best location for resources to address those needs as effectively as possible using currently available town and department properties or alternate locations known as station location study. I believe that we will be heavily cited on using current locations owned by fire departments as, as we want to keep costs down. Already owned is already owned is it's be thing. a good thing. Yes. Six. I, I'm sorry, that was an aside. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. Six, recommend use of currently available funds to further design effort uh, for both short and long-term projects. Continuation of the Willingham Fire Department one design work for station 13 at 426 River Road. Continuation of Willington Hill Fire Department design work for 25 Old Farms Road. Note that those two projects are separate and can move at different rates. Develop and recommend an emergency services facility plan or building plan of major capital items for all related services, including pricing estimates. Eight, seek information on and support pursuit of funding, including but not limited to donations, grants, state and federal funds, and local funds. Nine, seek design contracts for any portion of the emergency services facilities plan that are approved. 10, seek construction contracts for any portions of the, the plan that are approved. 11, communicate progress of committee work through public meetings, outreach forms, et cetera, as appropriate through the term of the committee. 12, provide assistance to and oversight of work in the town's name up to delivery of completed projects. And 13, provide a final report once the committee's work is done or no further progress is expected. So this is my proposal, not to move this tonight. I propose that we table it, we will publish it on the town website and accept public input until the next board of selectmen meeting, at which point the entire board should be here. I think that this is a big enough project that we should include the entire board of selectmen. In it. I agree, I have some comments. Go ahead, uh, why don't we, Post this and then we will work on comments leading up to the next board of select. That's so, fine. All right. What, what was number one? I'm sorry. One, identify emergent fire department facility issues. What do we need to do right now? Is that, is that like the, the possibility of the study or? That, study. Right now, that's, that the study is, I believe, step. Four well, or five. You had a lot that were this, about reviewing stuff, right. reviewing past yes. studies. Right. And then there is one in here for, for a, a future data. study. Yes. And but the emergent part is to see what we can do about getting our firefighters indoors. That's 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 primary. Keeping fire engines warm, people dry, that kind of thing. That's that's number one. Health, health and safety of our firefighters to me is number one. So after that, we can worry about whether the truck's got a transmission. 
Um, <clears throat> so we will leave that for now. And I do, I do encourage people to speak up. We can't accept every suggestion, but we will work through them as a town. Do you want me to post this draft with the minutes? Yes. And we will talk to the petition about getting it on the website if there's a separate area or stuff like that. I think there is. Um, so moving on. F Tricentennial Committee. Uh at the last Board of Selectmen meeting, I had been encouraged by Mr. McCoo to form a tricentennial committee. Uh, I was informed by the former first selectman that a committee had already been formed. So I went back through the written record and on March 20th of 2023, the Board of Selectmen created an ad hoc committee for celebration of the Willington 300th anniversary. So I am changing the name of this committee to the Willington 300th anniversary rather than the Tricentennial Committee to keep in, in continuity with former decisions made by the Board of Selectmen. That's the only thing that I found, period. So, to date, nothing further has been done. Therefore, I'm going to make a motion. I move to staff the Willington 300th Anniversary Committee and appoint the Director of Parks and Recreation, the Town Historian, and a member of the Historical Society. You agreed to this already. Yes. <laughs> That's why I'm staring over my glasses at you. Uh, membership will also consist of representatives of the fire department and up to seven community members. Position openings will be advertised. The director of parks and recreation will be the acting chair. He is aware of this already and has started the research. Luckily, the 275th celebration committee left us a four inch three ring binder full of stuff. It's enormous. Yes, which are. the I, uh, know. I help make it. <laughs> it's which, I know, which the uh, our our young and very energetic parks and recreation director has found great joy in. He's so excited. he will be uh, gearing up on that forthwith, and then he should already be uh, <clears throat> contacting some of the people who have. Who I've told who will express some interest. You so saw that folder. They've expressed it. This is a motion. We already have it, but I am I'm I'm moving to staff it. Okay. Would you like to second the motion I before I talk motion. anymore? Yes. I, 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 I stop right. talking. Right. We over starting to the yeah. Any further discussion? Uh, no, not that I can think of. I I I I didn't know that we had one, so that's good. Uh, yeah, I didn't know we had one either. That's why uh, I wasn't informed. Go ahead, Buck. First meeting for that committee is already set for six o'clock on the 11th. There we go. We are only been asking about it for a year. Yes. <laughs> so took me three months to get going, but I'm going. Great. It's good. Thank okay. you very much for your service, Bob. And we will abuse you further in the future. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, so that, I mean, can I just comment quickly? Yes. The, the the town has had a history of some pretty good acknowledgments of these. The 250th anniversary um, was one year off from the uh, bicentennial of the United States. And so those two years rolled together nicely. We had carnivals both years, all sorts of good stuff. Um, and then the 275th anniversary, we did pretty well. We had a parade down in South Wellington on 32. And uh, um, so I think, you know, it's an important, the, the 300th anniversary, I'll try not to call it a tricentennial, apparently, Me too. Um, is, uh, I think, a great opportunity to acknowledge all the things that are great about this little town. I think so as well. So, we will let that committee take charge and we'll we need to vote on that. Oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Go on. Okay. Um, I have a motion. 
The next one's William Wisconsin. Mr. 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 McCoo had my brain wandering off. <laughs> it's my fault. Yeah, oh, it's always so. <laughs> it is always your fault. Thank you, Mike. Willington Woods contract. Thanks. So <laughs> I am looking for here we go. Um Authorization from this board to look into a new contract with Willington Woods. The original contract with Willington Woods was signed <laughs> by uh, First Selectman Eldridge uh, back in the 18th of August, 2009. Uh, the contract has an opener every five years following that, although we have never opened it. Opener meaning? The opener meaning that we can renegotiate every five years. Um, the contract provides for a $30,000 cap on what we can charge Wellington Woods for water. Signed contract has never been amended says thirty thousand dollars. Right? Yes, signed contract that has never been amended says thirty thousand dollars. Since that time, the price of water has gone up, so we have been spending approximately forty thousand dollars a year on water and being reimbursed thirty thousand. So we're losing about ten thousand dollars a year in water because we haven't renegotiated the contract. Why haven't we renegotiated the contract? Dude? <clears throat> Why hasn't the town renegotiated the contract? These are very good questions for which I wish I had very good answers. Okay. Thank you. I do not. It has come to my attention, however, that it has not been done, okay. so I would like to do it. Uh, the other thing that it, this covers is, is septic, and we did not have a contract for septic upkeep until Two months ago when the septic system stopped working and they had to go out every eight hours to manually turn on the pumps to I keep our that. residents from swimming so we now have a contract for septic uh, maintenance thank god it's not me i got within about 25 yards of that thing i said ask me um so that is part of this contract as well. So I'm moving that we authorize me as the town's representative to look into renegotiating the contract with the will and boards. Uh, I'll, I'll, that's the motion, right? Yes. I'll second the motion for discussion. Okay. So that, that means that if it's 2009, and then every, every uh, five years, yes. 2014, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Been 19 a and 20. Right. So, okay. We should have rene renegotiated about three times or four times. Right. right. But we haven't. Okay. Good. All right. I have contacted the lawyer. He has given me some first steps. Uh, and I don't believe we're going to be able to recover the $10,000 a year we've been spending because it, it's per contract and the contract wasn't renegotiated, but I would like to stop the bleeding at the very yeah, least. I, I agree. So uh, so we're going to call a vote on that? Yes. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so if that leaves us about one year to do this, right? Uh, no, 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 it's every five years. We haven't done it for, we can do it any time. Because you can't do it more than every five years. Oh, you can't do it more than every five years. So yeah. there's a window. No, 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 no. There isn't a window. It's every five years you can renegotiate. It. Uh, it and it just hasn't been done. So okay. we're going to look into that and get it done. Got it. Now I understand that. Thanks. Um, oopsie report. I have it. You. I, did you not take it? I oh, I it. thought it was going to be in the folder. I thought you had I'm it. I'm sorry. No, I'll read it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, report from State Police, February of 2024. There were 276 calls to Troop C for service. 
13 accidents, 11 criminal investigations, zero burglaries, zero larcenies, 150 non-reportable matters, and six arrests. Motor vehicle enforcement included 101 total traffic stops, one on-site DUI, two arrests, one, dis one misdemeanor summons, 53 infractions, 15 written warnings, and 30 verbal warnings. I believe most of those are up on the interstate. There was one that was they bring out of town where did the drunk kid go through the center? Uh, I don't believe he was drunk. It was he was in excess of 107 miles an hour though when he was clocked. I feel like there was something on board there that wasn't. He, there's something that there's wasn't something right, on. but I don't believe that he was charged with anything. Oh, he was charged, but not, not with intoxication. Not, not intoxication. With uh, yeah. engaging an officer in pursuit and all kinds of stuff. Took yeah. out all the power and felt torn up for a while. Blew out the furnace at, at uh, Wellington Pizza too. Um, it's been an exciting month. Yeah. Uh, what is it about our polls? I believe we've had a couple of untimely deaths in town too that I'm just hearing rumors about. Uh, when it comes to the police report, the only thing I'd like to add is that uh, I'm going to discuss with the Tolland town manager uh, ways of getting better reporting from the state police. There's a more granular report on what's happening in our town. Uh, I know he's pushing for that in Holland, and I think that if we develop a, a report in concert so that they only have to come up with one report yeah. or one format for all their towns, that, that, that would make it a lot easier on them and, and probably make them a lot more willing to go along with it. I'm I'm familiar with the software that they're using, so when they tell me they can't do something, I okay. I'm also attempting to get a hold of our our, our our liaison officer who works 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. when I'm not here. So um, that's the monthly report. Okay. The Bolton Assessor contract. Bolton assessor contract. The background is we share our, our we share Bolton. our assessor with the town of Bolton. Uh the the um uh, time on this contract goes from uh one October to uh, the end of September instead of on a any kind of year and it's a three-year contract they're asking for some changes in the contract which i am not enough of a lawyer to understand what they're doing here so i really need to talk to the lawyer before i i make any decisions on that but uh the high level view is that they're looking to expand it a little bit to they, training. so we but we are already paying for training Mm -hmm. I don't want to be paying for training twice, mm -hmm. so we're going to uh, figure out how that how to how to uh, budget that and put it into our our town finances. So I don't know what I need. Yeah, I, I will look into it and I will come back at the next Board of Selectmen meeting when all of us are here with more information. Right. The only thing I would say is if we back up back up some of those items. Yes. So we will yeah I wanna I I want to understand what it says before I even start thinking about signing it. Dave, is that a 50-50 share or it's a 50-50 share I believe yes um yeah so on that topic 50 50 shares we are also uh sharing a building official and we're sharing a animal control officer 
And it turns out that the Capital Region Council of Governments is currently looking into ways uh, legislatively from the state to make it easier to regionalize uh, three functions of the town, those being building officials, assessors, and uh, animal control officers. So I'm right there with them. I need to speak to some of my fellow town managers, selectmen, et cetera, to see if we can do something with that. The animal control is one of my first concerns. We currently have a vehicle that we're not utilizing that we need to, to keep it running. Uh, I've got it back to running shape. Uh, so I've got the public works using it to run errands just to keep the oil moving. The state has changed their uh, requirements for what an uh, animal control facility needs to have. And uh, the Department of Agriculture has come in and told us we have $100,000 worth of upgrades to do, but we have a five-year limit. We have a five-year time frame to get them completed. So uh, that was their guess. Troy's looking at the um, requirements now to see if we can meet them for a lot less money. Um, there are stuff that, that I don't think anybody ever worried about it was whether like dogs in adjoining rungs could give each other diseases mm -hmm. that we now need to take care of. We, the state inspector said we have a roof problem. Troy can't find the roof problem. He says that he, there's no roof problem that he can find. The, uh, Gutters were backed up. Those have been taken care of by public works. I've uh, tasked Troy with keeping an eye on that building. The building is currently kept up by a volunteer. And we have one quarter, well, less than one quarter of a animal control officer. And the share agreement is is haphazard at best so i need to talk to stafford and Powell mm -hmm. and figure some of this out go ahead um perhaps this is a conversation for your associates at Prague also about the department of ag requirements to see if there's an opportunity to get some relief at the federal from the federal level because i'm beginning to hear this is becoming a problem for towns everywhere that right. all of a sudden their facilities some not very old need to be revamped at right. quite an expense. I believe it's the State Department of Ag. So I, I thought it was federal. They might be reacting to a federal. I, I thought it was federal, but don't quote me I, on I that. Think but the I guy I talked to was from the state, the and, and he, the, the Department of Agriculture has a department for overwatching animal control officers. And the reputation of the inspector for around here is to be very, very detail-oriented. Um, yes. We will discuss that at some further point. So, so that's the end of the Bolton contract. That's the end of the Bolton contract. Now we're coming to the appointment of Laura Rodriguez to the uh, to the conservation commission. Laura Rodriguez approached the uh, the uh, conservation commission. She attended a meeting. We have a letter from. Um, Kathy Demers, Chairman of the Wilmington Conservation Commission, asking us to uh, appoint her to the commission. They currently have one regular and two alternate vacancies. Uh, would you like to read the letter? I, I, I can read it out loud. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm saying is because I'm, I'm, I read it all. Dear, dear Board Selectman members, we currently have one regular and two alternate vacancies on the Conservation Commission. This month, Laura Rodriguez attended our meeting express an interest in serving on the commission to help protect and, uh, and improve the local environment. She has been a resident of Wilmington for over 20 years and has a notable history of offering her time and talents to our community. She currently serves as the director of the Wilmington Scholarship Foundation Dollars for Scholars Program, got mine in the mail, and recently yeah, served at, on the Board of Education 2020, 2020 to 2023. Laura has a PhD in science education 
and is currently a professor of science education at Eastern Connecticut State University. Her doctoral dissertation, this is the year, uh, 2020 was on inter, uh, intergenerational collaborations on community conservation projects. In the past, she held uh, positions at Hall School, seventh and eighth grade grad, grade uh, science teacher. Our members feel that Laura would be a valuable addition to the Conservation Commission. Her spirit of volunteerism, knowledge of science and expertise in education would be helpful as we continue our work to protect the town's natural resources and open space and strive to involve more of our youth and their families in environmental education and conservation activities. At our February 21st meeting, the Conservation Commission voted unanimously to recommend the board of selectmen that to the board of selectmen that Laura Rodriguez be appointed a regular member, fill a current vacancy that uh, has a term of 12 2 December 2nd, 2022, to 12 1 December 1st, 2025. For contact information, thank you for consideration. And uh, 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 Kathy's emerges online as well. So. Kathy, would you like to speak to this? No, that's Laura. Uh, that's oh, Laura. that's Laura. There's Kathy. Hi. Um, yeah, I think it's just as we said in our letter, I think uh, Laura would make a terrific um, member of our commission, and we hope that you will consider her for appointment. Thank you. Laura, would you like to say anything? Um, I guess first I'd like to thank Kathy and the and the other commissioners for such a lovely letter. I, did, I had not heard it, so thank you for reading that. Um, so it speaks to my background. Um, but I, I just think it's very important to do whatever you can to help your community. And I thought this was um, a, a really good fit for, for both of my passion, you know, education and also um, envir the environment and environmental science. Um, so, so thank you for that. Um, and, and then one, uh, you said you got your appeals in the mail, so that's great. Don't forget, we have our spaghetti dinner coming up in March. So I'll just do a little plug there too. And that's okay. it. We'll put that in a minute. It's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, good, good and welfare. Um, so I was interested. Uh, what did you find when you did your dissertation um, on intergenerational um, uh, conservation projects? Oh, I had quite. Well, there are quite a lot of findings. So it it was a very interesting project. I was actually I was looking at how these projects affected both teenagers and adults what's called STEM identity, their, their sense of themselves as being people who can understand, use, and contribute to science. And uh, the results were, were very positive. We found so many positive outcomes of pairing um, high school teenagers with adults, many of whom were on conservation commissions, um, and having them get to know each other and come up with a project that they felt would benefit their communities and then um, actually implement those projects. So yeah, it, in, our, in, our, in our rural town, I think it'd be wonderful if we could have collaboration with our students and our conservation commission yes. in our in our rural environment. That'd be great. I agree. Thank you. I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry. <laughs> well, I tr tried to give you the short version. I could have talked your ear off. So. <laughs> thank, thank you. So, given that, I would like to move that we. Uh, let me. Where, where's my piece of paper? I move that we appoint Laura Rodriguez to the Conservation Commission um, for, for the term of uh, for a term ending 12 1 2025. I'll second. Any further discussion? Uh, we already had it, I think. I think so too. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, thank you very much, Laura. Thank you. Look forward to some work because I don't know if Kathy told you we're already looking at projects. Great. <laughs> Looking forward to it. And, and I, I would like to see that move forward. Okay, so I keep losing my space. Union contract. The uh, not the town of, but the organization in town of the town employees has approached the town for. Uh, Union negotiations, initiating union negotiations. Uh, they've asked for some initial information. I've spoken to our attorney, and we release that. Uh, not yet. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, because we didn't talk to them till this afternoon. To the release, attorneys, we talked to them. release what? The union's asking for information on our employees. Okay. And uh, uh, 
time in service, uh, time with the town and payroll <laughs> and that kind of stuff. And so we, I wanted to check with our attorneys to, to make sure that we were free to release all of that before we did. He said that it, they asked for the standard list of information. Uh, some of it doesn't apply to our town because we have so few employees. Uh, and some of it we will discuss with, with the union on whether they really need that information. Um, but I am letting the board know that the union contract negotiation has not, yeah. we haven't started negotiating yet, but we started worrying about negotiating. Okay. And I would like to include the entire board of selectmen in on that, as well as invite a member of the board of finance Excellent. on the town side of the negotiation. So uh, we will be contacting Bruce to, uh, find somebody for that. Who's Lois? Bruce Wall. Do you have any idea of the dates? Because we've kind of heard vague references all along. May. May. Uh, the the union representatives I've spoken to are much more confident that our lawyers will show up than theirs. So we will. That seems to be the history. We will. Uh, do what we can to, to move this along forthwith. I believe the contract expires June, last day of June. Uh, did I talk about the 40? I, I already talked about the 40 work we get to the end. It's going long enough that I can't remember an hour. And that's continued until this, this July? Uh, the current contract expires July 30th, uh, June 30th, and the new contract will take effect July 1st. And the four-day work week sunset. It sunsets yeah. in two weeks, but we have uh, it's a temporary, temporary program. program until we can get it negotiated in the contract. Or out of the contract. Or out of the contract. One or the other. I mean, I've, I've heard a lot of comments uh, okay. from town people um, regarding that. All right. Well, that's we'll have to be taken in. Yeah, all right, go. We will have a discussion. Um, so that brings us to the town budget. Unfortunately, due to our lack of ability to form a forum, we didn't have a third last board selected. So we did not formally move to accept the budget that we presented last Thursday. So I would like to move that we accept the budget that we presented last Thursday, so that we have that on record that it's been presented. Unfortunately, time marches on with or without us. Right. And, and we needed to get that to them. Well, there's no requirement that it be voted on here before it goes, before it be presented to them. Be presented to them. Just as but I, I believe that if we if we uh, approve it now, that, that will signal to the Board of Finance that, right. that we got were our approved. Um, so I move that we, we all right, I'll second for discussion purposes. All right, so um, so regarding the budgeting process, um, I think it's pretty clear to everyone in town that this budget is going to be higher than than the last one. And um, you know, nationwide, I think the inflation rate nationwide last year was about three and a half percent. I think Pete, you indicated that uh, it was. Uh, they think told us six point two seven was the was the Connecticut inflation rate. Yes. So uh, the value of our money has gone down and the cost of goods has gone up and that's imp impacted all of our, everything. It's probably gonna impact our, our contracts as well. Um, so um, and I'm under the assumption that, you know, after we approve our board selecting budget, there'll be some, um, at the board of finance, there'll be some rationalization or discussion about how we move forward, okay. yes, who does what, all that sort of thing. That's their, yeah. Their charge, right, as elected officials of the town. Good. Um, so on the budget thing, I, I'd like to be able to, to to have when we have we have um, school issues, we have um, dog pound issues, we have um, fire department issues, fire department issues, we have um, you know inflation issues, um, we have road issues. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it'd be it'd be helpful for me to have. 
um, the CIP chair, Christina, come to the board of selectmen in, uh, along with the board of finance and just have a discussion with us. Doesn't mean that it has to be permanent. Yeah, she's um, uh, we can just discuss this. She will be appearing in front of the board of finance Thursday. Uh, I believe she's presenting this someplace in the right? Caribbean right she's now right? or something. She's away, right? Yes, she is. She's she is living a better life. life than I am she's right now. She's living her best life right now on a yeah. sailboat somewhere in the ocean. Or it's warm. <laughs> yes. Um, so, I mean, correct me if I'm yes, wrong. Yes, we, uh, we will invite her to the Board of Selectmen when she returns, but she is also appearing in front of, they, I believe they're holding another CIP meeting Wednesday. They've got one scheduled for Wednesday. And they've got Board of Finance on Thursday. And I believe she's appearing at at least the Board of Finance Thursday. Thursday. So I I would recommend that we listen in on that discussion so that we have at least a base of knowledge to ask questions. For. Correction. No, she is not going to be at either of those. She's not going to be at either. Well, she, she will not be back until the following week. So she... We moved the but we amended the budget counter the calendar and passed that to have the CIP presentation on the 14th. Excellent. Thank you for that. So on the 7th, we'll be getting the business manager's uh revenue set up and then Got it. start discussions. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the correction, because I am still working off of an old calendar or something. All right, so that ends that discussion. So we are back to present to speak. Does anybody else have anything? Uh, let's start with her. Let's go and start with Bob and then we'll go to new John. Bob Shabbat, 17 Jared Sparks Road. Uh, I'd like to touch on uh, what Peter started uh, the meeting about talking about, about fire stations. I would hope that when we start moving forward with the fire stations, that the study that was done that doesn't seem to have been made public insofar as where the services were required in town, that that would also be part of an open discussion so <clears throat> that nobody's holding their candle under a bushel Right. We, we need to have complete transparency. And just my opinion as a citizen and a taxpayer, I wonder if it's not time for the fire services in Wilmington and the community in a whole start thinking about building one fire rescue or fire emergency station and one substation we that that would i i would hope that that would be one of the products of this it, uh, the, the, the at least the exploration of, it, of all these these options well one of the things and, that, and to put out as much information as we can well, one of the things that is quite clear living in this area of Connecticut all my life, is that most towns have one station and they have a substation. And I know the firemen, the two stations are playing a lot nicer than when I came to town. They can actually come to a board of finance meeting, both in the same room. That never happened before. <laughs> Each one well, at, their, at their time when they came, mm -hmm. that was the way it is. Well, now that they're playing a little bit better together, I think that needs to be taken, taken into account. Mm -hmm. And I think they can even play better together. Thank you. That's my goal once a month, bring them together. They can play nice in sandbox. Uh, John. John Blessington, 29 Mason Road. Uh, during tonight's meeting, you, the first slide one brought up a uh, plan to take out the stage upstairs. And 
Um, it sounded like everything was going good until a member of the audience brought up a very important issue. I'd like to point out that in the previous regime, that would not happen because it was the job of the audience to sit there quietly and marvel at the wisdom of the uh, okay. Board of Selectmen. So uh, There's a lot I, like, more I like this change. And I, I've heard it said in previous meetings that this board is not uh, transparent and not open. Well, that is a big part of transparency. Uh, we've had quite a few people speak to the issues here tonight and we didn't have a problem with it and a lot of uh, important information was uh, traveled. Now, another thing I've heard, the previous first select person has complained that you don't have present to speak at budget meetings. Well, that's okay because she never did either. I don't know what her complaint is, but you don't need present to speak at, uh, at budget meetings if you will allow the members of the uh, of the public to speak up during the meeting and to speak to issues which are before you. I don't know where she came up with the idea that you as the board of selectmen are the only ones who can speak because prior to her, this, this is how meetings were always done. So I think you're doing the right thing and I just wanted to make that. Thank you. Mike, you had something? I thought I, thought well, I cut him off. Okay. <laughs> um, progress. So uh, going back to uh, the fire building study, whatever, I don't remember the name you used, but you, we know what we're talking about here, the yes. building committee. Um, we changed the, the name from facilities to building because that's how the, the you like how it sounds. That's what it, you it's gave fine. us some money. We, right. I'm willing to take it under any name they give us. Right. Um, the uh, I am very much in support of the idea of getting public input. As you know, I've encouraged you for weeks to get right. this out to the public. Um, I am a, I'm a little concerned about us adding another two weeks. Yes, because um, we've been adding weeks and months to this thing. We've been talking about it. The situation developed with 426 River Road last March. Um, whatever we think about what level of emergency it is, it's not getting to be less of an emergency as we keep adding weeks. Um, I understand. So I think the, the input's valuable. The decision's already been made tonight, but I guess what I'm trying to say emphatically is let's two weeks from now, can we please right. get yes. this thing moving? So can I speak to and, that for just a moment? Please. The reason I'm adding two weeks to it, and I, I didn't want to add two weeks to it, I would have liked to have passed this last month, is that I think that this is a lot of money. It's a huge problem. I want to include the entire board of selectmen on it and on, on the discussion. And I do not want to make it look like I'm cutting out the other party on this, which is what it would look like. Not my intent, believe me. But I want to make sure that all the selectmen are represented before we make a, a move of this. Completely this. understand that. I'm just saying next yes. week, can we try not to find another reason we need yeah, to I will. I will do my darndest and we will. We're, we're coming into spring now. Right. If we want to, so, and even if a temporary solution to help get their people undercover by next right. winter, we're running out of time to do anything by next I, winter. I Believe me, I understand so, you. And, and, right. and the pace of government is... <laughs> We, we, we move at half the speed of smell. Okay. So also, um, to Bob's comments before, yes, uh, if the recommendation comes from this group to the town to do the facility study, if the town approves it, we do the facility study, which I really hope we will do. It's it's an incredibly valuable part of due diligence. Then it absolutely has to be a public because if then the study or the committee is going to lead to now coming back to the townspeople to ask for money mm -hmm. for work on these buildings or some combination of these buildings, um, that due diligence is going to have to be a very valuable part of that conversation with the public about why we think a certain thing should happen or a certain amount of money should get spent. Absolutely. Thank you. And, and I'm sorry we're holding up by two more weeks, but I, I thought that it was important because we were still getting input as of yesterday. 
So I, I want to take as much of that into account as I can. <clears throat> yes, Michelle. Uh, Michelle Cunningham, I just wanted to um, both, both, while I'm acknowledging that I appreciate your informal tenor here yep. and, and the way we have various um, conversations, and I appreciate that, I do want to remind both the Board of Selectmen, the Secretary, and everybody in the audience to be careful about how you speak about other people in town, about whether their home, whether their home is empty, whether all of the types of personal information that people have talked about very casually tonight about personal information, snarky information, disparaging information, slander is not something to take lightly. And I don't think that that was your intention, but you should be careful about your words in public. These are recorded, they are available for the public. Thank you. Noted. Thank you very much. Any other, uh, Melissa? Hi, thank you. I just wanted to introduce myself um, uh, for the Wellington Day, uh, 63 Lushan Road. Um, so if anybody wants to join the committee, they can reach out to Wellington Day at AOL.com to reach me and uh, join the committee. That's it. You can also reach out to Shannon in my office and she will refer you to Melissa <laughs> and we will recruit the heck out of you. That's right. Absolutely. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much for, for, for taking this mission on, Melissa. It's, it's a big job, and I'm glad you're doing it. Thank you. Melissa, Thank you. can you just email that uh, address to me at some point? Yes, of course. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, no further presence to speak. Any here as well? But, uh, uh, Pete? Uh, thank you. Peter Voltage, Travis Road. I want to agree with. The sentiment expressed in the second round of, of President to speak on the need for transparency. I totally agree with it with respect to the I'll call the building fire committee, if that's correct. Um, I am I'm going to echo my earlier concern about what you're proposing, and I realize you're just starting, and I think the extra two weeks are well worth the time, but I'm concerned about the composition. Uh, if my notes are correct from the discussion you had earlier, we're going to have six firefighters, four uh, voting and two alternates, two town officials, board of selectmen and board of finance for a total of eight, essentially the government, for lack of a better word, um, and then two townspeople. Yes. That does not sound, with all due respect, very balanced to me. And I, I strongly urge you I, to, I, to, to consider I, the mixture here. That's I, something more representative of our community. I am taking into, into account your concern. I am also balancing that with the number of people on the committee. I want the committee to be small enough that it can move. And I and I really see the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen members as townspeople. They have, they have already, by the fact that they've run for office and taken office, shown a, a considerable concern for the, the community for its financial well-being, for the general well-being of the town. So I, 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 I'm not ignoring you. I will take that into account. And over the next two weeks, I'm hoping we can make some minor tweaks to this and see where we're at. All right. Uh, Steph. Stephanie, I want to call Steph you Suzanne all the time. Yes, I know. Well, she's the one with the thigh master. Uh, <laughs> Did you not listen to her? <laughs> I'm discouraging myself, Mike. I get to do this. Sure, carry on. Okay. Like first that. of all, first of all, I'm gonna I'm going to agree with Pete because um, and I know you're you're gonna hear more about this and you're posting it, and I understand there's right. a process, but the way I counted it, you said Pete 10, so three three from each fire department, one of them is an alternate. Right. Um, board of finance and a board of S, right? Yes. Okay, and then two public. Right. So that's one fifth of the committee is public. And and I, I hear what he's saying because I'm just imagining these two people coming in and there's all this officialdom. And and six of the ten are insiders. If you come to a vote, I think I, I'm not sure all six of them will be seated because you said two alternates. Yes. But they they're, might they're, be present. Two of them won't be seated. Even if yes. they're present, yeah. four of them vote, you know. Um, I just feel like that's heavy 
heavily weighed and there's been a lot of discussion in that group anyway they're going to be represented i think they both should do what you do when you're when you're fielding a softball game pick your captain you know pick your pick your best communicator and the person who talks to your folks and put that player in and then open it up for you know more people that we don't even know maybe are interested and knowledgeable about this idea that's my thought all right okay and then um on the spending uh, on the budget i just want to say that um i know the state uh communicated the 6.27 percent spending cap or however you want to say it um, inflation rate but i just want to say that we have to be really careful about that number because it is it has exemptions attached to it that are in the statutes so i'd recommend you revisit the statutes closely okay. because those exemptions are special ed spending which in this budget is at least two hundred and fifty thousand okay. additional yeah. because right. of the transfer out of special ed students and then all in addition it's a whole capital right spending. I, I, so i'm hoping I am hoping that the Board of Finance is, is the one taking the lead on that rather than the Board of Selectmen. I just, I just want to be sure we're throwing figures out that we're that we're right. where it's not like it's not just, it's not as tight as right. people are making it out to be. Um and then the the other thing though I'm curious about is what you guys have to say, and I understand the contract is is up for negotiation, but what you have to say about the way raises are being accommodated in the planning or are they or is there a place there, there is there is a placeholder okay. and and i i you don't want to discuss i don't want to discuss that in a public meeting okay um i will are there people who will be aware who might actually have to vote on things yes and and i will Discuss okay. that with people who might need to be aware and will be voting on things. Because when we're talking about the overall um, growth of the spending yes. or the plan, spending plans, that's a crucial yes. number to know. Yes, and where 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 the shock absorbers are built in. Yes, you need to know all that. Right. Okay. And the last thing is um, approving Laura Rodriguez on the conservation committee. Great. I think that that's like a superb um, example of someone who's I thought like. Thought that was kind of a no brainer. She's got it. Well, it kind of is, but you know, she uh, she's got like uh, connections, science connections, locally and globally, if you will. So I think it's going to be, you know, it sounds like a real uh, potential for growth um, in who gets involved in conservation projects. I, well, I would hope so. So go ahead, Mike. Um, one last comment on the makeup of the committee. I think this public input is really important, and I think whatever the makeup is ends up being is great um, because the firefighters, I'm sure, are seen, as we're hearing in these comments and seen by other people, as having a very specific vested interest in things. I just want to leave one last comment, and that is that you will not find any people more committed to this town and more members of the public who care about this town than the people who run into the burning buildings in this town and the people who do CPR and the people having heart attacks in this town and go out on the icy highway in this town. Mm -hmm. So let's just remember, if you want to talk about commitment to the community, the people who have been doing it for I don't know how many decades and 40 years myself are committed to this town. Mm -hmm. Respecting the vested interest. Mm -hmm. We agree. Okay, I, that's that's why this is not an easy task, and and why I I'm not committing to anything right now is because I don't want to commit to something without thinking about it first. I I, I know I need time to think. Sometimes the gears. Good welfare. Good welfare. <laughs> Do you have anything? <laughs> I do not have anything for good and welfare other than how the people lived uh, in, in the, the little home down there next to the, what I can't remember what you call it. The high relocated. Yeah, they've all been relocated. They were all relocated as of like within 24 hours. The human service, state human services ombudsman. Ombudsman's office. Office, Melissa. Uh, Marie. Marie. Yeah. I, it, which is not really Marie, it was yeah, something. Yeah, 
I don't know if those folks vote, vote or not. But they did a phenomenal <laughs> job at the state taking they're care of that. Yeah. They're all set. No, they're all set. They're all in a hotel? Or no, 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 no. No, no, they were all out of the hotel within 24 hours. Oh, okay. But they've all been put back in here. They've been relocated to homes that got to handle the services. Thanks. Yes. That's the only good one. Oh, no, no. That's, that's, I, I'm sorry. I thought you had that part. No. I, 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 I skipped one step ahead. Right. So do I hear a motion to adjourn? Right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time and and participation. Yeah.